Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante. We're back here at Dell World in Austin, Texas. Great, the great city of Austin, what a vibe in this town. Uh, we're here live, this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's continuous coverage. We bring you to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, we cover all the angles. We've had all the Dell executives on. We had Michael Dell yesterday, we, we've got Marius Haas coming on today, Steve Felice, Kim Stevenson, CIO of Intel. But we've got a special segment right now, really focusing on gadgets and mobile. You know, it's a key aspect of the market. Dell has been struggling in that area. You know, we all know the story. Dell's PC business is, is declining. The PC business as a whole is in decline. And of course, we all know about the rise of the, the smartphone. And you know, Dell's got this conundrum. On the one hand, it's got to play in the smartphone market, but on the other hand, it, it doesn't have the relationships with the, the carriers. So it's a tough situation for Dell, and that's where all the volume is. But mobile is happening, there's a lot of action here. We're here with Kristen Nicole and Mark Hopkins, both of Silicon Angle, they're experts in the area. Folks, welcome. Hey, thanks. All right, so Kristen, let's start with you. You've, uh, you've been roving the floor, listening to the, to the keynotes, you know, reading all the news. You know, what do you see happening here at Dell World? There's a lot happening uh, with on the gadget side. They have got a little station outside you can play around with uh, some of the new devices that have come out this year. They've got their tablet out there, the Latitude 10. Got to play around with that for a little while. Um, Windows 8, of course, is huge for them. So it's their next big opportunity to really get back on this mobile bandwagon here. Yeah, I mean, everybody's you know got the Windows 8 skepticism on. We're going to actually ask Steve Felice about that as to whether or not you know Windows and uh, or operating systems are a catalyst or. Uh, and, and what that means for Dell, but what do you think about the whole Windows 8 situation? Is that going to propel the market? Is you know the people not going to move fast enough? Is it is it is it is it not as relevant as it maybe used to be? What's your take on that? Well, it's clear that Microsoft's got their strategy, trying to provide uh, their own devices and work with partners like Dell, and then also get their products, their software on as many devices as possible. So. It's, it's very evident that that's important for them. Whether or not it will pick up steam remains to be seen. One thing that really stood out for me when I was playing with some of the hybrids, now the hybrid, I think, is a, a huge play for here's the entire Windows computer experience that's gone mobile. So there's a, a laptop that you can pop out the screen and take it as a tablet, and you've got the combined experiences in that regard. Uh, but I, I played with it a little bit, and I think there's still a lot of usability kinks that they need to work out. So it's familiar in one regard, and I think that's very important if they're going to target business users and uh, maybe also some of the regular consumer end. It's, it's going to be um, an interesting play, I think. We'll see. Mark, what are your thoughts on, on this whole space and what Dell's doing here? Well, so so Windows 8, I think, so Kristen and I were talking about, because we, we both played it over in their little mobility experience area. I think it's it's easy to use, but not intuitive to use, which is a subtle distinction. I mean, because you got it, uh, I left it over there. There's a book, they give you a manual on like how to use the UI. It's, you know, 20 pages, uh -oh. like the size of a notepad. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's simple stuff like, you know, swiping from the edge of your screen or swiping down and, like we had a, a, a little bit of a time trying to figure out how to share stuff. You know, on Android, it's really easy. You've got that little universal symbol for sharing on just about anything you see on the web or on uh, on all devices. And within the uh, the Windows interface, you, to share, you need to swipe from the right edge uh, to pull up the sharing interface, which, again, it's easy once you know how to do it. But, but so you're swiping a, a, a semi-vertical screen, is that right? Yeah, no, I, so like this, say this is your tablet edge, you just like that, and then the, it comes up with a little bar on the side and hit share. And but I mean, you know, the, the human wrist is such that you, you're much more comfortable swiping a flat surface, you know, versus, uh, you know, pointing my wrist up. Right. Right. Well, I can see right. the carpal tunnel the syndrome hitting me. I mean, uh, If you've got <laughs> the tablet, then you can hold it, you know, however you would hold a tablet, and you swipe this way. If you've got it, if it's one of the tablets that also doubles for the docking station, then uh, it... Well, there's standard <laughs> Windows mode, too. Yeah, there's also standard Windows right, mode. Okay. So if you scroll enough over to the side, you'll see all the, the options that you have for Windows. If you scroll back this way, then it's the Metro UI interface and specifically to this, this sharing feature that we're talking about, if you've got it docked and you're using the keyboard, it's not quite as easy because you're more inclined to use the keyboard when it's docked. Uh, but you, you can still use the touch screen while it's docked, so then in that case, yeah, maybe there's some carpal tunnel issues that you might run into. I imagine there is a, a good way to share when it's docked. I just 
I have to go back through the manual. Are you, <laughs> the concept of a manual is scaring me, guys. I gotta admit it. You know? but I thought we lived in a day with uh, with no manuals, but uh, or at least minimal ones. Like you know, like when Dell ships you a PC, well, you get you get a little card. <laughs> step one, two, three, and you're done. That's that's my kind of manual. To be honest, it is it is a little bit like an IKEA manual. There's a lot of pictures, yeah. but it, it's still there's a booklet nonetheless. A lot of languages. Yeah. A lot, okay, so it's a little uh, <laughs> deceiving in that regard. Okay, but so. What's your general sentiment on hybrids? Um, I, I, I mean, I've heard sort of mixed reviews there. People have called them fence sitters, you know, they're not this, they're not that, but they're sort of all in one. But but what's your take on, on that? I think they have a lot of promise. I think, you know, this is, this is their first real product, major launch in this, in this area. I think the idea of a hybrid is important, especially if Dell is looking to remain bullish on the PC market, but find a good way to manage the mobile scene. So I, I really do like the idea of a hybrid. I think that's a concept that people can latch on to. You put the tablet, attach it to this thing, it looks just like a laptop. You'd never know that it's a, a tablet if that's what you need. Um, if you want to take it as a tablet, then take it as a tablet. The, the user experience doesn't change too much. One issue I ran into before I could even play with it was Somebody had put the tablet back on the dock upside down and then the lock, the rotate was locked. So I'm trying to use the mouse and the mouse does not work at all if the tablet's upside down and locked. So you, and you have to actually take the tablet back out of the dock, turn the lock thing off, put it back in, flip it, open it, all this stuff. It's, I, I think there's several usability kinks that they need to work through to, to really ensure that this is a hybrid that's ready for the masses. Yeah, which they will, no, no doubt, but Absolutely. the, the 1.0 version's got, like you say, a few warts. Um, okay, well, let's talk a little bit about Android. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I, I mean, um, betting on, on, on Microsoft, obviously, the long-time partnership. Uh, some of the management stuff that Dell's doing in the enterprise is, is, is uh, you know, OS uh, agnostic, I like that. Uh, but do you feel like uh, Dell's got to sort of break that you know, long-term tie with Microsoft and, and start, you know, going with something like Android, or do you feel like the Microsoft path is the right way to go? I think it makes sense for Dell at this point. Uh, <coughs> this morning they, you know, announced that they're going to just, they've kind of given up on Android. They couldn't figure out a way to make it work. They're not going to even bother with the smartphones anymore. They've even pulled out of China, which was a great experimental market for them. And when it comes to Android, I think that that OS in particular has a, a really good potential to expand beyond just smartphones and tablets. I think there's going to be a lot of connected devices in the future, whether it's related to your car or kitchen appliances, lots of other gadgets that I think are really going to go to Android first. Um, I'm not sure what Dell's thoughts are on exploring that specific aspect of, of the market, but um, yeah, it's so a, a little early to say. So, okay, so yes, I mean, I, you're right. The news this morning, Dell's sort of backing off from smartphones, which we sort of expected anyway. But Mark, do you feel like long-term that Dell has to be in, in phones? Um, that's a tough call. I think, they, I think they'll have to return to it at some point. I mean, <coughs> right now, uh, I mean, it's, it's I'm, I'm, I'm surprised they got out of it, gave up after, you know, a couple of tries at the, bat, at the bat and left, because really, we were just talking about this in the office the other day. <coughs> Excuse me. The, uh, the, the feature phone market is still a significant portion of the, the mobility market, and, uh, you know, 50%, according to some estimates, have not yet switched to a smartphone, and that still means it's a land grab at which, you know, it's good news for Microsoft. Could have been good news for Dell. But uh, as uh, Dave Floyer put out the other day, there's some numbers, or he, he did some analysis on the uh, the numbers, and uh, Dell net income in mobility fell, it was the, it was the largest falling uh, area of, uh, of any of their, their sections, so. Yeah, I mean, Dell's PC business, right? I mean, Dell, Dell was, the people used to be really fearful of Dell. Like, oh no, Dell, I'm going to compete against Dell, uh, and, and you know, clearly HP's doing a good job in, uh, in, in PCs, even though, you know, for a while it wanted to sell its business unit, Lenovo, um, and, you know, they're, they're doing a good job of, of, of gaining share there. Uh, but the whole sector's in decline. The way I see it is that Dell, at, at the same time, Dell is large enough and using its buying power, you know, to leverage that into the enterprise. Really only Dell and HP can do that. We were at HP Discover in Frankfurt last week. HP 
Mark, you were there. You, they right. launched a bunch of new tablets. They did. They actually launched it on the Cube, right? Yep. The first time any, anybody really in the states had seen them, because uh, we were up earlier than they were. Yep. Um, how would you compare what Dell's doing here with what uh, HP uh, just launched? <laughs> so uh, HP did a pretty good job uh, with theirs. I'd say that they're, they're they're on par. They're on par. I mean, Dell's offerings out here that we saw. Now the their uh, I think the release dates are pretty close to each other. The look and feel of the devices seem to be pretty close to each other. Uh, they got the tablet and then the the hybrid offering. Which is uh, you know exactly what HP had. Um, I think I like the having played with both of them. The uh, the feel of the HP hybrid was a lot uh, sleeker than the Dell hybrid. So I think uh, from a you know we might win some cool points there on, on you know just general look and feel of the device. But the form and function of the, the aside from the form, the function of the devices seem to be easily comparable. So, so essentially and the price ranges as so well. So essentially, it's it's the 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 big enterprise whales. Uh, approach of competing with Apple, right? Yeah. So they're trying to deliver enterprise value. Um, is that because Apple's not getting it done in the enterprise? Um, I think that's always been the case, right? Or, right. I mean, they don't seem to really target the enterprise, right? But, but just by the fact that everybody wants to bring their own device, it's almost like it's forcing it in there. So I guess my question is, is it going to work? You know, will these guys be able to to compete and uh, with an end-to-end -end strategy <coughs> that's integrated and secure and all those other you know wonderful things that you'd expect from a, a Dell or an HP. So what do you guys think? Well, my, my thoughts have been in, in several editorials that I've written, and you know mixed reviews on it. But my thoughts have been that this is this is a situation where uh, it may kill BYOD, opposite of what Dell has been kind of preaching here in their marketing messaging, is uh, because we can go back to the days where your company bought you a phone, right? Because they can provision and do the governance stuff just like they would with any other Microsoft device, any other Microsoft desktop, they can set the policies at the, at the top level. So you don't, they don't have to worry about you bringing viruses into the network on your BYOD situation. You know, oh, you let your three-year-old play with the, with the the tablet last night, and now you've got spyware, or malware, or Trojan horses. You know, well, now if you if the if they if they control the security level and what kind of sites you're able to browse, what kind of apps you can install, then that that's not a risk. So, right. All right. What else? What else are you guys tracking? Uh, anything in the news that you want to highlight, or any other trends that you see that we should be talking about to our audience? Well, I think the device, the the all-in-one workstation that Michael Dell revealed during his keynote yesterday, um, I think it's important to note because he specifically outlines this as a device that will be prepped for business as well as entertainment. So it's kind of shifting away from this enterprise-only strategy, really looking to expand back into the consumer market with this one. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited to see what this device is going to be. A little disappointed that they didn't have it here, uh, not revealing any more details. We've talked to a bunch of people on the floor trying to get some information out of them, and, and it's a no-go. Yeah, so that was weird, right? Yeah. I mean, Michael, you know, because he, he's usually very, I mean, he was he, he was very crisp in his presentation, you know, but he, he sort of leaked that out. He says, hey, we're doing this all in one. We're really excited about it. Then he said, "You won't be able to see that till next year." I was right. like, "Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't just even tell us the name of it. Right? Yeah, yeah, we couldn't couldn't get any details they, they, on there that." There is one. a name of it. Someone knows the name Someone because knows. he was thinking about whether or not he was going to tell uh -huh. us. So, what do you think it is? I mean, you have What's any the clue? Name? <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, the device. It's all in one. You well, he, sho he showed a picture. Yeah. So there's a picture of this device, and I, if I had known that there were going to be absolutely no more details on it for the rest of this event, I would have snuck a picture of it. And it, it's a workstation. It's for the desktop. It's in line with you know the, the popular Apple computers all in one sits on your desk and pop out tablet screen you can can just take it with you so that's really all the details we have so far but the fact that he made a point of saying this was for work and play this is going to be an entertainment device as well I think that's really important to note here excellent all right good well Kristen and Mark thanks very much for coming on the cube give us a little update on what's happening at Dell with the with the gadget world, key part of the market. It's obviously the fastest growing sector of the market, and uh, Dell is committed to this end-to-end -end strategy, and really really only Dell and HP can make that claim, and uh, they're going at it. We know we know they don't really like each other, <laughs> and, uh, and so we love that here at theCUBE. But, uh, <laughs> so we'll be back. We've got a number of guests this afternoon. Let me just go quickly through that. We've got Marius Haas coming on. Marius Haas was the, the networking executive under Dave Donatelli at HP. Now, essentially, Marius Haas has the same job that Dave Donatelli has, except he's, of course, got it at Dell now. So he's running servers and storage and, and networking for Dell. Um, so that's going to be interesting. We're going to get his perspective 
Uh, converged infrastructure was really a term that HP started you know, when Marius was there, and so he's brought a lot of that mojo to, to Dell. We want to talk to him about that. Um, we've got a number of other executives coming on. Steve Felice, who's the head of sales, really the president and chief commercial officer at Dell, and uh, Karen Kitos, who's the senior vice president and chief marketing officer at Dell, and we're hopeful that Pete Kors is going to stop by. He, uh, he texted us earlier, said he's going to try to get here at four o'clock, so keep it right here. Uh, this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's continuous coverage. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon, and we'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>